Hello. Thank you so much for joining me for this session. Hopefully you're well and you are um, staying safe and healthy. And so we'll get started. We're going to do for this session, um, probably a little bit um, more energetic, not too high intensity, but um, a moderate uh, flow. Of course, I'll show you ways to modify the whole way through. And hopefully you are modifying as you need to. Remember, I am merely offering suggestions. Um, and if it doesn't work for you, please don't do it. So make sure you have all the things you need in order to support yourself. You need, if you don't have a yoga mat, you need at least as much room as a yoga mat. Though I do recommend getting a sticky, uh, cushiony yoga mat. And it's one of those things where you kind of have to play around to find the one that's going to work for you. Um, I've got blankets for comfort. I've got blocks for support and to bring the floor up. So I've also got a wall near me. Don't be afraid to utilize uh, your space, maybe even having a chair or a heavy piece of furniture, something that the support, the blocks, the wall, the chair, that you're not putting all your weight on that. It is just there to help you um, balance in the pose. So, and that's one of those things too. As you first start out, you, you are putting a lot of weight on it because you don't know how not to, right? And then you learn to hold yourself in your trunk and then you just use the, the support, the block, in order to just bring the floor up or get a little bit deeper. So uh, hopefully you're playing around with uh, props because I find them to be a wonderful addition. All right, find that comfortable seat, making sure that you are comfortable, your legs are not tingly, you're sitting in a way that um, promotes that uh, comfort and then also stretch. So support and comfort and then also lift if you need to sit up against a wall or if you wanna sit in a chair, of course you can do that. And you're going to let your eyes close and take your time settling in on your breath. Letting the breath come in and out of your body any way that is comfortable. And that full exchange of air where you take it in and then let it out. That is the rhythm of the universe. That expansion and contraction. That taking in and letting go. That rhythm is what keeps the universe humming and moving along. And the time you take to connect to your breath, just reset in your space, being aware of the present moment, setting aside your to-do lists, what's going on tomorrow, what happened yesterday and just be with your breath and yourself right here, right now. And you are practicing kindness, compassion, and love with yourself. three-part yoga breath has started to get as full and deep as feels good. You're filling up the lower third, then the middle third, then the upper third. That's your inhale. And then exhaling, release upper third of your lungs, then middle third of your lungs, then the last third of your lungs. And you can get your whole body involved as you fill up that lower third Press your navel into the space in front of you. That middle third, feel those ribs move up and apart. When the breath goes into the upper third, feel your heart move up in your chest. 
And then you exhale, heart and chest relax, ribs move down and together, and then you pull that navel back and up into your body. And then the inhale happens again. You fill up navel, ribs, chest. Exhale fully, chest, ribs, navel. Whenever you find yourself struggling, either in poses or to pay attention, return to your breath. When you become aware that you're struggling, that you need to focus on something, when you get lost in that train of thought, when you become aware of that, that is exactly when you are doing yoga. That's, you're doing yoga right. So don't think that you'll never be able to get it because you keep thinking about other things that's going to happen until you get better at coming back to your breath. So keep practicing. Feel yourself press down into your mat, wherever you're seated. You can bring that slight tilt to your pelvis, lifting that front body, pressing those knees away, flexing those feet. You feel that support, that anchoring in and you are rooting down there from within into that place. And then on your exhale, stretch yourself into the space around you that you are meant to take up. So lift yourself, lift that heart, pull those blades down. Maybe you feel a gentle pressure across your collarbone on the tops of your shoulders. Keep pressing the crown of your head up towards the sky and then you're lengthening that space at your neck right underneath your earlobes. Still you're breathing full and deep, navel, ribs, chest. Exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. So your shoulder blades are pulling down and gently activating together. You're not squeezing them into that crease like you're squeezing, like you hear a grape or an egg. It's it is a gentle activation where you're pulling them in, pulling them down and into your body. And that supports that front body. And still you're breathing full and deep. And not only are you rooting down, but you are rising up. You're doing both at the same time. I'm going to keep bringing your awareness to both as we move through this practice. So stay with what it feels like in your body. Rooting down from within and rising up from within. Let yourself reach those arms wide. Keep those shoulders pulled out of your ears. Stretch up as much as feels good. Pull down into your heart center a couple more times inhaling exhaling third time and then find yourself just taking a couple breaths starting to unwind if you're sitting up on something maybe bring it out from underneath you i have a little tickle in my throat hope i'm not starting to catch a cold that would not be cool Drop those knees side to side, waking up from that seated position, getting that blood flowing, inhaling and exhaling, staying lifted, bringing yourself into that staff position. That's where your legs are extended. And we're early in the practice, right? So we're taking just a few moments, finding that place of support, pressing down and lifting up, activating those legs. I've got those toes pointed to the sky. I've got my kneecaps pulled up into my thighs. And then we're gonna hinge, so stay lifted 
And then if it doesn't feel good to reach wide like we just did, then reach up and in hinge. Or you can keep your arms really low and row this way. But stay with that. You are rooting down and you are rising up at the same time and you're hinging over those legs. We're gonna pause in that reach. This is a great place for some blocks. Maybe you even wanna reach under and grab, gently grab that, that beautiful uh, lower belly flesh out of the way, just to just gently pull it up uh, so you can get right into those hip flexors and then maybe you go a little bit deeper, but you don't have to have your whole chest on your thighs. Keep trying to root down and rise up and then you're going to release and come up into an upright position and then bend those knees again. Windshield wiper back and forth. Letting yourself reset. We're going to come on to our back. I'm going to move this blanket. And actually, I'm going to take this sweatshirt off. So just give me one second here. So you make sure that you're comfortable. You're drinking water as you need it. Throw that over there. So now you are on your back. And you are windshield wipering to start with, inhaling and exhaling, trying to spread your whole self on the mat, trying to spread yourself out wide. Keep that pelvis in that place of support. So you might have to keep pulling that tail down. And if that it feels good, you can lift those feet up off the ground and rock and circle. And if this hurts your low back, then bring your feet down to the floor. So a couple times, let yourself, you can also rotate the ankle, move the toes around, inhale and exhale, whatever feels good. Eventually, you're going to bring yourself down to um, having your feet on the ground. You're engaging in that beginning. I'm going to take these socks off so I can really press down into the floor with the ball of my feet, reaching those arms um, down by my side. You're pulling that pelvis into that place of support and then lifting. We're going to lower and lift a couple times, inhaling and exhaling. You don't have to go very high. Keep thinking about trying to pull that pelvis down as you lower and lift. Don't let the toes do any work. We're going to pause. It's still early, so you don't have to run your, roll your shoulders under. You're just uh, breathing in this bridge position. Pay attention to your knees. They shouldn't be touching, but they shouldn't be falling out. So it takes a lot of awareness to keep them active and pointing to right where the wall and the ceiling meet. Uh, right there in front of you, and then we're going to lower down one vertebrae at a time, letting yourself release down, and then you are resetting however feels good, whether it be the windshield wiper or the rock and the circle or some combination of that. And then feet back uh, in that beginning bridge position, we're going to just drop that right knee on top of that left knee and we're in this uh, cross-legged position. You're trying to bring the back, or I'm sorry, you're trying to bring the top of your left knee into the back of your right knee as much as you can because your right leg is on top. And um, we're going to have those arms then. I don't want you to clasp the fingers because I don't want you to strain anything. I want you to leave the fingers nice and loose. They're coming just to dance right behind your ears. I want you to keep engaging those shoulder blades. I don't want you to pull those elbows towards each other. I want you to keep them pretty wide. And you're going to take a big inhale and then exhale and then 
inhale and then exhale lift together and then come back down and then if you are trying a couple of these and remember you're not bringing those elbows towards the leg i want you to keep your legs your elbows wide you can always do one side you can leave the lower body down and you can just lower and lift the upper body remember you're not clasping those fingers or you can lower and lift the only the lower body so whatever you've chosen if you're doing both you're breathing deep inhale and exhale you're going to pause you're going to uncross those legs you're going to bring those arms down by your side and you're going to reset however feels good breathing full and deep and then it is going to be left knee on top of right knee, inhaling and exhaling. Bring those hands, those arms behind you. Remember, you're not clasping the fingers. You're taking a big inhale and exhale and inhale and then exhale, crunch. And if you don't want to crunch both, you're just crunching one inhaling and exhaling especially if crunching both hurts your low back stay in awareness of your body remember you're not pulling those elbows towards that leg you're keeping them wide so you work that whole trunk all right eventually you're going to be done and you're going to pause and you're going to rock and circle and windshield wiper and whatever feels good and then back into that beginning bridge position the right ankle is now going to come on top of the left knee really try to press both of your glutes down into the floor so start out by bringing your arms out into a t position and your right knee is bent that right arm is going to stay and i want you to feel it like it's glued all the way down like there's no way any light can come from right shoulder blade down to your right fingers those left fingers once again are going to dance right behind that left ear i want you to keep i want you to think more about your left breast all right keep that elbow wide i want you to take an inhale exhale think about trying to bring your left breast to your right knee so you are going to lower and lift so maybe that right side maybe you just reach a little bit further i know you can't see my right side you can just see the left side that i'm lifting up inhale and exhale a couple times breathing full and deep Try not to bring that elbow towards that leg. It's more about the breast, the chest. All right, you're going to pause. You're going to drop the right leg down. You're going to pop that left ankle on top of that right knee out into that T position. Right fingers just dancing. Remember, it's the right breast coming towards that left knee. Inhale, exhale. Breathing full and deep. So really try to keep that elbow wide. Don't strain anything. If this is strain, if this strains too much, don't reach so much. Keep breathing. So see how I can reach just a little bit more down that left side. Inhale. And as I'm just rolling up actually to that left shoulder blade, coming back up that right, rolling to that left, coming back to that right. And then you're going to pause, you're going to rock, you're going to circle. And then I want you to get long. Let your legs extend down your mat. Let your arms reach over your head and stretch that center. Inhaling, exhaling, breathing full and deep. And then we're going to do one of my favorite things. I love this. This is you keeping those. So bend those knees, feet on the floor, and then start with your arms down by your side. And I really want you to try to press your sockets into the floor. That means your right glute, your left glute, your right shoulder, your left shoulder. I want you to feel yourself 
trying to keep those in the floor. I want you to keep tucking your chin so the back of your neck stays long. And we'll start by having those that upper girdle engage, lift, lift those arms up, and that might feel a little bit weird. Like you almost might not be able to bring them together, and that is okay because I want you to be active and engage in that supported position. And then you're gonna lift those feet. And if it is too much to have the feet pointed towards the sky, of course, you can have the knees bent. But you're in this like dead bug position, right? And you're um, got the, sh the, the sockets connected. So you're moving from the socket here. I want you to move the right arm, left leg. I just want you to move the right arm and the left leg. I don't want you to move the other limbs. I want you to keep those limbs in that static position as you move right arm, left leg. And remember that knee can be really bent. It doesn't have to be, and as you can see, my knees are really bent. Couple more, you're moving from the socket. All right, you're gonna pause. It's the opposite limb. So now you're just moving right leg, left arm. And this is, you're trying to keep them, the other limbs static, it's hard. Inhaling and exhaling, couple more, and then you're gonna pause. You're gonna rock, you're gonna circle. You're gonna reset whatever feels good, inhaling and exhaling. Stay with your breath, letting yourself completely reset. And then you're gonna come back into that beginning posture. So make sure that you've got that nice long neck and you've got the sockets pressing down and then lift yourself into, so if you just want to do the arms and then the leg. Now we're going to go side to side. So keep, so the right arm, left leg, it doesn't have to come to the floor. Keep the other limbs nice and steady. Try to keep your trunk nice and steady. Inhale and exhale, bring them up. And then you're going to pause and you're going to do the other side. Couple more. Inhale and exhale. Keep trying to press your glutes and your shoulders into the mat. You are moving from those sockets. And then you're going to pause and you're going to rock. You're going to circle. You're going to roll to one side. You're going to press yourself up, coming around onto those hands and knees, taking whatever um, break you need to, making sure you get the cushion that you need, and press yourself back in that child's pose, letting yourself reset there in child. I'm going to grab a drink before I do that. So coming back, and resting. Walk your legs as wide apart as feels good. Make sure that you always feel in control. Let your breath be full and deep. Navel, ribs, chest. Exhale fully, chest, ribs, navel. And then up into your table, stable table, knees underneath, hips, feet out right from the knees, hands underneath, shoulders, do not hyperextend those elbows. Move that pelvis in that tiny pelvic tilt a couple times to find that place of support. Move into that uh, pectoral girdle, pulling the blades together, pulling apart, and then find your cat and cow more in the middle back. So the more you keep your girdles engaged and supported, the more they're going to protect you. And then you're going to get that movement more into that middle back, that middle part of your trunk that typically gets no love. Inhaling and exhaling. Try to feel yourself evenly pressed down. And then at the same time, feel it's almost like the universe is pressing up into 
It's like it's giving you a double high five. It's like it's giving you a high ten. All right, you're going to pause. You're going to press yourself back into a child. Release completely. Even though this is a resting posture and I'm saying release completely, you're still holding yourself in your trunk. You're still pulling that tail down and lifting that front body. You're always doing that, pulling the back body down, lifting the front body. Try to find that, um, that connection as you lift into your downward dog. Take your time. Come to the balls of your feet. Stay with your breath. Don't hyperextend the elbows. Don't hyperextend the knees. Move as little or as much as feels good to you. Letting yourself come to rest and table or child whenever you need to. Inhaling and exhaling. We're going to take our time and make our way to the front of our space. And you can either come down to hands and knees or you're going to step up. From that downward dog, you're going to find yourself on two feet, finding those balls and those heels, not letting those toes do any of the work as you rock and circle, or not really circle, but half circle, rock and sway and dangle, whatever feels good to you. And then finding yourself in that forward fold, now we're going to play around with halfway up, flat back. Um, you're going to lift yourself on your next inhale, just halfway up, flat back. Keep those knees, knees nice and bent. Exhale, reach for the floor. Inhale, halfway, flat back. Exhale, reach for the floor. And then inhale. If you feel dizzy, do not come all the way up in this great big reverse swan dive. Come up in steps and stages. Keeping your trunk nice and long. Trying not to round your trunk. Hands make their way to your heart. Your navel or one of each are out to the side and you are coming into mountain. This is where you're finding yourself standing on your feet, the balls and the heels. Think about the tripod or the four corners of, so it's four corners uh, underneath big toe, little toe, or and then at the heel on the left side and the right side, or the whole heel is just one piece and then you've got right underneath the big toe and the little toe. Lift the digits, spread them wide, bring them down for a gentle grip on the mat. Try not to use your toes so much. Lift those kneecaps up into your thighs and then you're coming to that pelvis. You are dropping the framework, engaging the muscle slightly to then, and you're, you're dropping the back body and lifting the front body. Think navel dimples down, solid base, and then navel dimples up. You've got, you're floating light as a feather. That heart comes up, those blades engage and come down. The shoulders, uh, the shoulder blades spread, or the collarbone spreads wide. You might feel that slight pressure, and you are in your mountain pose. I have to really engage and pay attention um, the inside to engage that framework. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that you do as well. So take your time and pay attention. And if you sometimes feel it, right? Keep practicing, right? Cause you know that you sometimes feel it. Like if you feel it all the time, you know you're practicing all the time because you feel it all the time. And if you're like, I don't feel it, but I want to, keep practicing because you will. All right, from the top of your space, we're going to move with intention. All of the moves have a real world application. I hope you can see them. It's not just something we're doing up here that doesn't mean something. Everything we do helps you move around in your life. I mean, at least do your chores. It helps you at least do your chores. I mean, that's like the least it helps you with. But actually, it helps you do all the things you want to do. All right. Make sure you feel nice and supported. And then you're going to lift and do as much of a back bend as feels good. And then you are exhaling into your forward fold. You are then lifting halfway into your flat back. And then coming back down to step back into a plank or a knee down plank. It's really up to you. Keep those girdles engaged. Release down to the belly. Keep that lower body really heavy. Pull those shoulders out of your ears. Pull those elbows right by your obliques 
and only lift up as much as feels good. So maybe you want to come all the way up if this doesn't aggravate, but maybe you want to stay in that lower cobra and then you're going to lift yourself or you're going to release down and then lift yourself into your downward dog and then you're going to make your way to the front of your space. Find that solid ground underneath your feet, underneath your body, and then inhale halfway, flat back, back for the toes on the exhale, and then inhale all the way up to standing into as much of a back bend, and then exhale back down to the toes. Inhale halfway, flat back, exhale back down to then step back, plank, knee down plank or table, keep the girdles engaged, release all the way down, and then press yourself up to your cobra. Keep protecting yourself. Don't hyperextend any of your joints. Don't put any pressure on your joints. You get to that downward dog or you come from that table and you make your way to the front of your space coming into that forward fold. Lift halfway, flat back, back down for the toes. And then we're coming back up, reaching, 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 taking as much time as we need. Staying aware of the body as you hinge into that forward fold. Lift up halfway, flat back to come back down, to step back into the plank, knee down plank. Remember to keep the girdles engaged, especially those shoulders, that pectoral girdle, lifting into as much of a cobra as feels good, and then going into that downward dog, however, feels good, two to three breaths, and then you're going to let yourself rest down completely, inhaling and exhaling, getting a drink of water if you need it, staying with your breath. Remember, you are always in charge of what is going on. You're taking care of yourself. Inhale and exhale. We're going to come to downward dog or table. It's up to you how you come to the front of your space. So either come to table and step up or lift downward dog and step up. That way, forward fold, lift halfway, flat back, reach down. For the toes, we're going to reach up. Coming into that back bend, and this time we're going to sit back, awkward chair. So put that weight in your back body. Bring those arms down so you, and they can land at your heart or right at your hips, and you are really putting that weight in that back body, and then that front body is light. You're trying to lift that heart up, that navel up as you sit back. Inhaling and exhaling, staying with your breath. Those hands can come to your heart. And you're going to breathe full and deep. We're going to press into those legs and lift ourselves up. Those arms can swing around, gathering up all that good juju. Inhaling and exhaling. Coming with those hands at your heart, at your navel out to the side notice how it feels and then stepping from the front of the space back so taking the left leg and coming back into a crescent lunge so you are on railroad tracks you want to feel awareness of the balls and the heels and your trunk is engaged right you are pulling those back pockets even pulling those front pockets even and that is what is holding you, navel dimples down, that solid base. Hands can be at the hips or the heart, especially until you get to that place of support. Inhale and exhale. You have to really crank. You're scissoring those legs. You have to crank that left side forward, that right side back in order to find that um, place of support. And then... Hands can come to your heart. I want you to drop that right arm. Keep that shoulder engaged. Don't hyperextend that elbow as you reach that right arm forward. And then 
Let that left arm come forward. Let that right arm backwards, that back behind you. That left arm in front. Keep the navel um, in, uh, anchored to the front as you rotate the heart to the right. So this is a definite. This is not you twisting that low back. This is you twisting that middle back. Inhale and exhale. Remember, don't let the toes do the work. You're going to untwist. You're going to lift a little bit so you can then smear down that back foot. You're going to have to rearrange your legs in order to find that trunk in between. You still got that right knee bent. And then you are lifting yourself up out of your warrior two legs to then hinge over that right leg. This is a great place for a block. I love to gently press my limbs against each other and then reach that left side up to the sky, inhaling and exhaling. I'm always trying to rotate my heart and my navel basically in the same direction. Protecting my knees. Inhale and exhale. Always try to feel in control of the legs. So if you need to step a little bit forward, I've got my left kneecap, that back kneecap, pulled up into that thigh. You're going to lift into, this is you lifting into that warrior two, to come into that reverse warrior. Inhale and exhale. Lift yourself here to then swing into your hinge, your triangle hinge, inhaling and exhaling, staying with your breath. Be, be aware of your breath, your body, your heart, your navel, still trying to come up. We're going to rotate. Well, it might help to lift. You're paying attention to the four, to the two corners in front of you. You might need to step that back leg forward a little bit. I know I do, so I'm going to take a few steps. And in fact, I'm going to then turn and rotate it back on railroad tracks. All 10 toes pointed towards the short edge of the space. And I'm going to get that left arm down towards that left corner. Keep pulling those kneecaps up into your thighs. And I'm going to keep that navel anchored again. And I'm going to rotate that heart open too the right. This can be an awkward reverse triangle, but that's okay. And then right hand comes down and you've got right hand, left hand on either side of that right leg. Play around with coming into standing split. This is where you balance on the, that one leg, lifting that left leg up. You're coming into that one leg and hinge. Inhale and exhale, breathing full and deep, and then you're going to drop that left foot down next to the right foot. When you're done, you're going to be breathing full and deep. You're going to lift up halfway, flat back. You're going to reach for the toes, and then you're going to reach up above your head, hands to your heart, navel, one of each, out to the side. Notice how you feel, breathing full and deep. I'm actually going to turn around. So I can stay facing you when we get to the warrior two posture. Um, so I don't have to keep yelling over my shoulder. We're back towards the front of our space. If you move from there, you are in your mountain posture. You're going to reach up into as much of a back bend as feels good and then sit back into your awkward chair. And if it's too much to have your arms lifted, then keep them at your heart or your hips as you um, really settle into that back body and then keep lifting that front body. It's almost like you are going to fall back on your ass or you're going to fall forward, um, you know, and do a somersault. You're somewhere in between that always. Take another inhale and then exhale. Press yourself up, finding that length, stretching as much as feels good, and then make sure that you feel supported. So if you need to have your hand at a wall, you're going to step that right leg back, that left leg is forward, you're coming into that crescent lunge, and if you're like, uh, oh wait, I already did that side, then just make sure that you are um, managing that. So it's the same thing, you're on railroad tracks to start with, you're lining up those back pockets, make sure those toes are not doing any work, and your trunk is coming down in between 
And then your arms are wherever feel good, inhaling and exhaling, breathing full and deep. And then we're going to play around with hands to heart. Keep those girdles engaged. Reach that left side, um, that right side back so that right arm is behind you. Oh, wait, no, the left arm is behind you. The right arm is in front. We're going to twist the heart to the left, inhaling and exhaling. As you twist the heart to the left, keep bringing that right hip at its working as a whole, front pockets, back pockets together, forward. And then you're going to untwist, and then you're going to lift yourself in order to smear down that back foot so you can come into your warrior two legs. You're finding that place of support. So it's now it's like you are on a balance beam and you've got that left heel lined up somewhere with that right arch or maybe that right heel. Sometimes there's a line on the floor. You can see you're pulling those kneecaps into those thighs and you are hinging over that left leg, inhaling and exhaling, reaching that right arm up, staying with that breath, navel, ribs, chest, exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel, lift yourself, come into that rever reverse warrior, lift yourself, and then hinge into your triangle posture. Stay with your breath. Now you know, like, try not to move to the next part, though you know we are going um, into playing around a little bit with messing with your center of gravity. I just want you to make sure you do not hit your head. So be always aware of your surroundings. I am lifting up. I'm using the blocks. I am bringing that right foot forward so I feel steady. Like I don't go any further until I feel steady. That right hand comes a little bit towards the right corner. I keep the navel anchored and then I rotate the heart up to the left side. Inhale and exhale. And then right here's where you make sure you don't hit your head. You play around with coming into that standing split. It doesn't matter how high you get that leg, but it's about, right, think about trying to open at the, at the, at the glutes, right? That's where it's, that's what's holding, right? It's that front and back pocket that's lifting that right leg. And then very gently bring that right foot down next to the left. You're in that forward fold. You're going to lift up halfway, flat back, go back for the toes, and then come up above reaching as wide as feels good to find yourself with hands at your heart, navel, one of each, out to the side, whatever feels good. Make sure you're taking care of yourself, getting a drink of water as you need it. And then practicing Balancing tree, you're in charge of whether you want to do it on your right or your left leg to start with. I like to come so I am near a wall. I'm even stepping up off my mat. And I'm going to start balancing on that right leg, but I'm holding myself evenly in my trunk. I'm not balancing that left foot, if I can even get it on these pants because they might slide. I'm not getting that, I'm not balancing that left foot on my knee. It's above my knee. Inhale and exhale. Stay with your breath. Remember the toes are not doing a lot of work. You can do whatever with your arms. Breathing full and deep. And then come to stand on two feet. Notice how you feel. And then play around with going into pigeon, or pigeon, uh, tree, it is kind of pigeony, going into tree on the other side, inhaling and exhaling, staying with your breath, you're keeping those kneecaps uh, pulled up and so you're supported always. Remember not to Treat yourself bad and to keep giving yourself encouraging words, inhaling and exhaling. And then find yourself, come onto the 
down into a downward dog to reset there and then make your way either through a flow and then down to your knees or just pull yourself forward down to your knees to rest in child. Inhaling and exhaling. So it's Yogi's choice. Just make sure you're resting in that child to reset completely. Inhaling and exhaling. And then when you feel good, like you have reset, we're going to come onto our back and we're going to do pigeon on our back, which is probably one of the most accessible ways to do pigeon. I'm actually going to grab my socks because my toes are getting a little chilly. So make sure that you are protecting yourself as you um, need to, supporting yourself as you need to. And so make sure you've got cushion. I'm actually going to put my sweatshirt back on too. Make sure you've got cushion if you need it, especially underneath your head. Um, you're keeping your neck nice and long. It's easy to strain and you want to make sure that you don't. So you need to be kind of stay aware of that so you don't strain. And so on your back, you are doing a windshield wiper move, or you are rocking and circling, whatever feels good. Letting yourself completely reset. Inhaling and exhaling. Here's where you want to keep those sockets engaged. I'm going to keep that right left foot down to start with and bring that left ankle to that right knee. And I am really trying to actively press through both legs, starting at that pelvis. That's a lot of stretch right here, especially if you've got that legs active, you've got that pelvis active, but if you want more stretch and it doesn't hurt and you're not straining, you can always pick up that right foot and you can always reach through that opening with your left arm. If you have to lift up, that's okay. And then you can bring it back down by keeping that neck long. You're not uh, grabbing, um, you know, horribly on the back of that leg. You're being careful. Inhale and exhale. You also can just use the strength of your legs, keeping that pelvis down. Inhaling and exhaling, staying here for a couple more breaths. Wherever you're at, your arms can be down at your side if that's what feels good. If you're not reaching through, Eventually, you're going to be done. You're going to bring that right foot down. You're going to bring that left foot down, and you are going to reset whatever way feels good, and then you are doing the other side. And it doesn't have to even look like the first side. It can be different. It can be the same. It can be more intense. It can be less intense. It's always up to you. Keep actively pressing through that lower girdle. That is what is getting that strengthening. Pressing through those heels so the whole lower body is active. Only coming into the more advanced, the more intense stretch, if that's what feels good to you. And then eventually you're going to be done. You're going to rock. You're going to circle. Maybe do a few little happy babies. This is where you reach for your feet, keeping those knees really bent. Make sure you keep those glutes nice and um, heavy so they're not lifted up off the mat. Inhaling and exhaling. And then have those knees be bent, the feet on the floor, and walk the legs as wide apart as about maybe mat distance. And then bring the arms up and bend the elbows with the hands resting near the elbows. And then drop the knees to the right and the elbows to the left. And if it feels all right, then gently, you could take that left hand on that right elbow. You've got that girdle engaged, so it just gives a little extra press on that right shoulder. Sometimes it feels good to lift your chin and then look in the direction of your knees, inhaling and exhaling, it can be a lot. So if it's too much for you, don't do it. If you've got that going on, you're going to let that go. You're going to bring those knees back up to center, drop them to the left, bend the elbows, hands dance by your elbows, and then you drop the elbows 
um, over to the right. Now the right hand comes on top of that left elbow and gently presses down. And then you rotate and lift, inhaling and exhaling. I just felt all these cracks. It felt amazing. I hope you like how your body feels right now. Take another couple breaths. You're going to reset coming through center. You're going to move however feels good. Letting yourself come into your final resting posture of Shavasana. And if you have got five, seven, eight, ten minutes to lay in relaxation, please do. Uh, if it, laying in relaxation doesn't feel good to you, you can also sit in meditation. You have worked up all of this oxygenated blood, and if you take this time right now to let it settle into the nooks and crannies, then it's like it's making a deposit into your long-term bank account that you can draw on when you're in your 60s. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste. Take care. Stay well. Stay safe. Bye.